merrily, merrily, rolling along, rolling along. Oh, that was out of tune. <laughs> hey, you guys. Oh, my God. Merrily, we roll along. Okay. I, so I've always said that I my favorite song time is, and this is what I've always said, my favorite song time is most likely Sunday in the Park with George, but maybe Company and a little night music with Merrily We Roll Along Not Far Behind. It now might be Sunday in the Park with George and Merrily We Roll Along like neck and neck. I mean, wow. So I have another video explaining the whole background of the show about how it flopped on Broadway, blah, 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 it's survival, all of that. So check that video out, because I'm not going to waste time on that. I'm going to talk about this show. But I also want to talk about my new friends, Pat and Jess and Rachel, okay? Because, so Pat Payne and I became friends on Facebook. And then, uh, and we kind of became friends and did a lot of back and forth. And then when I was buying tickets, and I think I posted in one of the rooms about the line and everything when you're buying tickets from Merrily We Roll Along. And he's like, hey, we're buying for this date. Do you, do you want to come with us in New York? And I'm like, hell yeah, I'll take another trip to New York and go because it's still in previews. So, which I love seeing shows when they're still in previews and then seeing them you know, after. So, um, we went and had dinner which I'd never been to, Broadway Lounge at the Marriott Marquis. Really good food, really awesome, awesome views, really cool. And we got to know each other and his wife, Jess, and their friend, Rachel, who is a lucky woman because she's now my friend. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> well, because they're all my friends, so they're all lucky, right? No, she lives here. Well, she lives across the river in Jersey. Anyway, so it was great to see this show with people who obsess about theater and Sondheim like I do. Um, so much fun. Um, anyway, so we went and saw the show. All right. And then we went to Junior's afterward for dessert to talk about the show and to still learn more about each other. What a fantastic night. And I posted in my Instagram, um, which, yes, I, if you guys aren't following my Instagram, please do. Um, I'm J. Scott Queen. Go figure. Right? <laughs> That's my Instagram. Um, anyway, uh, so... I posted on there how ironic it was seeing Merrily We Roll Along on a night that I have just met these new friends. Because really the theme of Merrily We Roll Along is friendship. Um, I mean, the theme song really is, hey, oh, friend, what do you say? Oh, friend, are you okay? Oh, friend, are we or aren't we unique? I love that song. I love that song so much. Um, and that song, so the show is about the three friends, Franklin Shepard, Charlie Kringas, and Mary. You know what, I don't know that I ever know, we, don't, we do know Mary's last name, but I can't remember it. Franklin Shepard is played by Jonathan Groff. Charlie Kringas, played by Daniel Radcliffe. And Lindsay Mendez plays Mary. All three have their moments. All three are exceptional, but they are best. <laughs> they are best when they're together when it's the three of them and they do the pinky swear and they they have a friendship on stage these characters connect on stage in a way that you believe that these guys have been friends for decades and they have so the story of merely we roll along is these three friends and and their friendship starts in 1952 like seven I think it's the night of Sputnik when Sputnik was was launched and they're on the roof of a building that Mary has a, a apartment in and Charlie has an apartment in Frank has they've just met and Frank's moving in and they all meet on the rooftop to, to watch Sputnik and they form a friendship and um, Frank is a composer Charlie is a, a lyricist a writer um, he, he's written plays and Mary is a novelist. She's a book writer. She's writing books. And so, of course, they're in the arts and they form this bond and this friendship. And it goes through the years the, um, and they make choices and decisions happen. They become famous and they have fallouts 
and they choose, they make choices and they choose other people and they choose other paths and they hurt each other. And in 1970 something, uh, Frank is pretty much alone. So that's the story kind of, that's a real quick version. However, it's told backwards. In the very opening, we meet Frank and Mary's making one last attempt to have a friendship with Frank and it is destroyed and he runs her out and says, you'll never see me again. And so he's all alone. And then it goes backwards in time. And so we see the dissolving of the friendship backwards to the way, and, and we see the friendship at the beginning, at the end. Um, just a brilliant storytelling method, uh, really incredible music great music um there's great songs um th that are just phenomenal in the show uh merrily we roll along there's an ensemble a very good ensemble which has a lot of broadway debuts a lot of people in the ensemble are making their broadway debut um i want to tell you some of the songs those of you that follow along okay um uh, like, like it was is a very popular song old friends of course i, I told you that not a day goes by is a heartbreaking song um, j that's just beautiful, that um, is, is sung uh, by Beth, who Beth is played by Katie Rose Clark, and Beth is who Frank Shepard marries the first time. Um, and uh, that's a heartbreaking song. Um, now You Know is a really great song. Um, there's just really great things. Um, not a day goes by again opening doors that's the name of the song I was looking for that's at near the end and then of course our time is just a beautiful moment I don't want to ruin the ending for you guys I was literally ugly crying I was I was sobbing I cried all the way through the show because I know the show so well but I've never seen it live and it it was beautifully directed by Maria Friedman Maria Friedman directed this show with such um, elegance and with such subtlety you know i've said it before brilliant directing is when you can tell that the director made choices and made things happen but it's effortless and you don't see the directing you know that it happened because the director told them to but there's so many small nuanced things i have to see the show again well i'm seeing it in december uh, on my birthday night but I'm going to have to see it again. I just know it. I'm going to see this song, this show multiple times because there are lots of little things that I know I missed. Um, Katie Rose Clark, who played Beth, I told you about, was just absolutely just beautiful. And, and she doesn't have a huge part, but she made the most of it. She didn't try to steal. She, she gets it that those three are the, are the stars, but boom. And then Crystal Joy Brown plays Gussie, which is a huge part that she is all of the stage she eats she's a character um who takes up all the oxygen in the room well she's a broadway actress hello um the character gussie and um crystal joy brown just played that part for everything in it my one of my few criticisms of the show the only one i'm really going to mention is there were m several times when i couldn't hear her i'm sure now the show's still in preview so i'm sure sound is going to fix that or maybe the actress Maybe she needs to pump up a little bit more, but there were several moments that I was listening, going, I, I miss what she said. And, and I'm one of those guys, you guys that follow my videos, you know, if I can't understand you and I can't hear you, get the fuck off the stage. Ooh, I didn't mean to say the F word. I hope I don't get banned. Oh well, I'm not the only one that's ever said it. Um, all right, so let's talk about the guys. All right, first off, Daniel Radcliffe. Now I saw him at Equus. And when I saw him in Equus, I was blown away. I saw him mainly because I wanted to see Equus, because that was a, it's, it's a show I love, love, love. And I, I went, wow, this is also that Harry Potter guy, which I've never seen Harry Potter. I don't like Harry Potter. I'm not watching Harry Potter. Well, how do I know I don't like it? I've never seen it. I don't have no interest to see it, okay? Don't hate me. Don't come for me, because I don't care. All right? <laughs> Y'all know that. Anyway, but I saw Equus. I'm like, damn, this kid is so good. He was phenomenal. Um, his biggest moment, I think, well, no, his biggest moment was when he's with the three of them, but he does have this moment where he sings a song called Franklin Shepherd Inc. It is a tour de force song. Um, in the 2012 Encores uh, concert version, Lynn manuel Miranda did it. Um, and that's my favorite rendition of the song so far, Daniel Radcliffe, Daniel Radcliffe 
did it phenomenally and he sits in a chair the entire time the song is probably like eight minutes long it's a huge long song and he sits in a chair the entire time and it's fine because any movement would have been distracting jonathan groff as franklin shepherd inc as franklin shepherd insanely good um insanely good he finds every emotion in this character who is for the most of the show not a likable character you really don't like who he is at the very beginning and that's hard to play that role when the audiences hate you and then you've got to have them fall in love with you throughout the play he does it brilliantly Sorry, you guys. I, my throat is sore from screaming and yelling and bravo and, and crying. Um, he just is amazing. Jonathan Groff is this brilliant, brilliant actor. But Lindsay Mendez. If I have to pick one, Lindsay Mendez is the performance not to be missed. Talk about finding that nuance and about reacting because a lot of the part of Mary, Mary Flynn, that's her last name, I think. Is that right, Flynn? Yep, I was right. Okay. <laughs> I love it when I'm right. It happens so seldom. Um, there's a lot of the play that Mary is standing to the side because they're the partners in work. And Mary has been in love with Frank from the moment she met him, which we do see at the end. Um, but he doesn't love her back and he doesn't even realize she's in love with him. Um, that woman is a phenomenal actress with so many layers to her. She brought so many layers to Mary Flynn. I literally could sit here and talk about Mary and I could tell you what her house looks like because Lindsay Mendez plays that role so clearly and so fully realized. I can tell you what that woman, what Mary Flynn eats and, and what she thinks and what she does because Lindsay Mendez showed me all of it in her performance um, and never took away from the other roles, complimented, encouraged them. But truly the three of them, when they're together, is just, when they do, old friends, <laughs> Sorry, you guys are used to this, right? Ah. Anybody who has ever had a really close friendship, you will cry and you will be moved when they do because you see, you would think that these three people have been friends their entire lives because they have such chemistry and they work so well together. Um, one other notable thing I want to say, the costuming really stood out to me because this goes through decades and the ensemble plays multiple roles. Um, there were costume changes, but they were subtle for the three leads. Um, but the, and the costume designer is Sutra Gilmore, who did scenic and costume design. Um... It, brilliant they're just pay attention to the costuming I, I'm not going to tell you what they do with the costuming just pay attention to the costuming there are certain small nuances again that happen in costuming throughout the run of this play that goes from the like 1980 to the 50s okay the costumes were authentic for the period but also worked for the show and worked for the characters it was just very smart um, I really cannot give Merrily We Roll Along a enough thumbs up, enough accolades, five stars, whatever. Um, I know I've run on. I can't help it. This show, seriously, one of my newest, uh, maybe my top new favorite, uh, Merrily We Roll Along. Um, go see it at the Hudson Theater. Um, if you go on December 2nd, I will be there. Um, and who knows, I may go again. And again and again because that's how much I loved it so thank you for joining me for another theater talks with Scott talking about my favorite composer Stephen Sondheim um, an evening that I spent with new friends 
who I feel are going to be long time old friends. <laughs>